That's what Mama told me. Yep. There we go. Let's just do the whole fucking podcast. Right, that's it. That's it. All right. Well, welcome to the podcast show. This is Joe, and I have my friend Rot with me today. Filming a infinity and beyond. Hotboxing the infinity and beyond. Working title. Cheers. I still think it should be and be bong, but we don't think bong hits in here. No, we don't. What do you got for us today, Mr. Rogers? All right, so I rolled a joint, and it is 75% deep, I mean low tide, 75% low tide from Falcona, Indica Dominant, with 25% CBG Pacific Sunshine. So a nice little two-to-one ratio, two parts THC, one part CBG. Because I forgot what we said we were going to talk about. I didn't. Okay, good. We do have a topic today, just so you know. Be, be aware. We spend many hours and many weeks working on our subject matter for you. Many meetings, many pass downs, many polls, many, many much researches go into these. Mm. This uh, dry hit's really good. Earthy, piney goodness. You need a lighter, sir? I mean, you didn't even bring it's a lighter. fucking ridiculous, dude. How I managed to never have a lighter. Why'd you hit your drink for from that, dude? Got the sick of me smelling good. Uh, I'll see. You. All right. Hold on. I didn't get to do my... Dry hit. Okay. Uh, Catch it up. Smells like pot. It's got a crutch thing on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe actually looks like he's designing them now to look like little pot leaves, which is actually kind of fucking cool. I don't know if you meant to do nah, that. It's I either Oradeus. I didn't. That's it where could, the serrated is. That's it could be. It could be the agave. Oh yeah. These are so good. They're like tequila. We're gonna get in a fist fight. Nice. Cheers. Cheers, homie. <laughs> don't let the bells begin. We paid the navy to do that. Oh yeah, my bad. It's not called breezy moments in the car with. Who are you? Oh yeah, Joe. Yeah, I go by my birth name. But birth. Immediately. Smooth. I don't think these are going to have the power to hotbox this one. <laughs> Probably not. So good, though. Oh, my goodness. That is good. Man, <laughs> there's just something about mixing the THC and the CBG together that really do it for me. <coughs> I know... Excuse me. I'm gonna cough all over the place. Edit that out. No. Uh, I know that the last one we did where you sprung. Well, no, no. Actually, it was one you brought to my house. That one was great. I think we did that one. Then I came over here mm -hmm. and I was chill, and then we smoked something else. Yep. Just good. proving that whole day was great. That was a good day. Since Shiva went away, I have been getting up every morning and I grab my book and I don't turn on any power except for one light, a cup of coffee. And I have been reading for the first hour I get up every day. And honestly, dude, my head feels better. Yeah. And throughout the day, I'm much more productive, creatively. So I'm, I'm a big fan of reading on the pot. Uh, getting my 20 minutes of reading a day on the pot. Dude, that's the best thing to do for your brain. It is. And then also, sometimes when you read something in depth or profound, you can think about it during your day. And it's pretty cool. You should read Dark Days by Randy Bly. It's about how he went to check. Some fan got murdered at a show by security, basically. Uh, and he manned up, and he did the time. He spent, like, 50 days in a Czechoslovakian prison. And this book is amazing, but it covers yeah. alcoholism, like, because he's a hardcore alcoholic. He's one of the reasons I got sober, because he, well, try. Uh, he, he, you know, my, when your heroes start getting their shit together. And you're like, whoa. Yeah, and I worship him for his ability to be a drunk moron. Hmm. It's a deep book, and it just, it, it's, it's, he's just so well written. Check it out. All right, so the topic today, believe it or not, is, now that I'm halfway done with my joint already. But burn it good, though, man, yeah, like a fucking little really cigarette. Good. good job, Joe. Golf clap for yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good marijuana. airflow, good, you know, good amount, you know. You don't get the golf clap for yourself. You would, you would think I'd know, oh, what? I can't do it for myself. Well, that's just saying. Oh, just okay. It's like wearing your own shirt. I mean, you have a girlfriend, or why are you jerking off oh, all okay. the time? I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, wait, because genetics. So, subject. Yeah. Subject is <laughs> is advertising in the cannabis industry versus the alcohol industry. Or any other commercial industry that exists. 
And but it, alcohol is a good comparison. I mean, you got people driving around with, with outhouse trucks with pictures of people pooping on it called clever things like Schmidt's... Yeah, Schmidt's shits. Schmidt's shits removals and, you know, the turd blaster. It's so, just frustrating. If you advertise for booze, you can put up billboards, you can have sign spinners, you can have commercials. They finally took it away off local channels. Now you can only have booze commercials on, or liquor commercials on cable network. No longer you can have liquor on local network, like 4, 5, 7, oh my God, it's so, I remember when they but, used to be able to drink beer on TV, and now they always just hold the beer. They never actually consume it. What yeah. kind of silly... In your face, obvious bullshit is that. But, but as an alcohol store or liquor store, you can have big signs. You can have signs neon. on the street. You can have neon signs. You can do whatever you want. Cannabis, though, even though it's been legal for over five years now in our state, you can't have window paintings. You can't have sign spinners. You can't have a sign that's a certain size. Uh, you can't sell merch out of your shop. You have to have a separate business license to sell the merch is dumb. in a separate shop. Uh, you can't wear your work shirt out in public. You can get in trouble for that, especially if it has a pot leaf on it. What? Yeah, watch the liquor control board, man. Look it up. You can't wear your fucking work shirt outside of work, and especially if it has a pot leaf on it. Also, the online advertising aspect of it, mm. so bad. You cannot even say that you're selling weed. You can't say, mm -hmm. hey, we're selling uh, cannabis at the shop, come down. Yeah. You can't Facebook say you're selling will it. gladly fucking take your money, though, for advertising oh, and for still sure. fuck you over, even though you are listed as a business in a legal state where that product yep. is legal. Yep. Now, what I was curious was, because are it's illegal we, federally, that's why. Is it a Washington thing, or are all states beholden to this 502 bullshit? Yeah, so if you're watching this and you're from a different state, let us know if I'm looking it up right now. some of these things we're saying are true for your area, too, or if it's just our state being fucking snobs. Uh, one of the other things I want to say about online stuff is you can't say, come to the shop. You can't say how much the price is on something. You can't say you're giving a percentage off or a discount. Um... You you can't do any of those things. Okay. Whereas booze, you can be like, hey, come get drunk down at the fucking so-and-so. Uh, two 12-packs for fucking $6. Buy a Jägermeister thing with shot glasses. I mean, we can't even hardly, we can't do nothing. Yeah, right? and you have to attach a, a LCB warning to every single social media post you make. It's just not worth it to advertise under those it's conditions. It's not. And no sign spinners? Come on. Also, I learned that the main reason why advertising is so much more strict for oh, cannabis shit. than booze is because they're afraid that it will be targeted <coughs> towards children. Mm, Blackberry fucking shooters. <laughs> fucking, yeah, yeah, jello shots. The, the, the hypocrisy of it all is ridiculous, dude. And it, it's, it's, it's such a... If you're a parent, it's not how you raise your kids. You don't raise them with, with the face of the obvious and they just lie to them and be like, yep, you have to learn to accept this as the truth. How you old know? were you when you had your first drink? Well, I had a very alcoholic stepdad, so I'm assuming somewhere around seven or eight. But I didn't drink till I was 28. Yeah. See, I, my, I got drunk where I had my first drink at 15. Oh, my first... No, no, 12, I'm sorry, 12. No, if we're talking about that, all right, well, the first time I got drunk, I immediately got suspended from school because my friend Jennifer DeBattista and my brother Brett Armstrong, rest in peace, fucking grabbed me out of the house and with a fifth of Jack Daniels at 14. And holy shit, man, fucking... And I went to school the next day. I woke up still drunk, you know, two hours later after sneaking back in and went to school, and all three of us got suspended. I wound up in a mental institution for six months. Six yeah. Six months? Damn. Maybe that's why I didn't drink. Yeah, well, I bounced around a couple of them. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> they kept saying I was crazy, and that made me Which mad. I find is interesting because uh, as far as, like, people, was their first time having a drink... There's having a drink or getting drunk, you know, you could go. Have you way. ever, who, name one person you've ever met that was like, I remember when I was 14, I had a stiffer of bourbon on some ice and had on a lightning comp. No, everybody's no, it's a, like. it's a fucking mad yeah. dog or Boone's. Oh, ever, God, I forgot Brett again. Uh, Brett Armstrong and me and Ryan Wood. Uh, we fucking Everclear, straight up Everclear, grain alcohol. And when we were doing this, we were like mixing it with everything in the fridge, condiments. 
Ooh. That night ended badly. Brett Ooh. went to jail. A shotgun was pulled out. Yeah. Uh, I remember walking with my pants off, like down the street in our neighborhood, Ooh. very small town. With ketchup, mustard. Oh, ketchup, dick. mustard, Worcestershire. Some accidental Jeez. good mixes. <laughs> but you know. Yeah. No, but what I was gonna say is, is that most adults will say, "Oh yeah, my first drink was at 12, 15, somewhere in the preteen, maybe every now and then." But mostly it's teenage years, and it's because you—they're curious. We're curious, right? Drinking is such a normal thing in our society that our parents probably have a drink. Worshipped. Yeah, worshipped. I mean, and you get off work, dad better have his fucking beer. Mom has yep. her little brandies all day long or whatever. Sorry, I'm old, so these are probably... Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> and uh, so, you know, that surrounds us. The alcohol surrounds us. So our youth are is going to experiment with it. But when it comes to cannabis for some reason, which is not as bad as alcohol in my personal opinion, it doesn't make any sense to be so much more strict. Like, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You bet a 16 year old's gonna see a pot leaf on a well, shirt. There's still the bar makers that look at it and see it classified as heroin. And since they've never smoked well, it, they don't understand uh, it. Yeah. They think it's dangerous and the they're narcotic. protecting the children. Also, there is massive money in in anti children legislation. Like like, you know, they they make a lot of money trying to act like they're not advertising to children while the whole time they are very much obviously hoping to snag those children young and get them into yep. their fucking market. Exactly. But that's Cigarettes. how capitalism works. Cigarettes are yeah. a great example of that. They've targeted kids. They've been busted for targeting kids on multiple occasions. And yet they're still able to do whatever Same they with want. the alcohol. Come on, Same please. Wine coolers and yep. shit. Yep. You know, so <clears throat> the problem isn't that the children are dumb. It's that, that we approach it and give them this thing like, ooh, which any human being will immediately be drawn to. But weed, you're right. I mean, I was... I was actually more exposed to marijuana growing up than I was alcohol, and all I ever saw from it was benefiting good, and you know, at the same time I saw cocaine, drinking, all that shit it was all surrounded by drama and fighting and everything. So to me as a kid, weed was always a soothing thing. Plus with yeah, my obvious out. ADHD <laughs> issues and everything else, it just made me function. Uh, I've seen stupid people do stupid shit with weed, and there are some people that when they get all stoned, they're like, they, they disgust me for, 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 it, for our stonerisms, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. like, Jesus, dude, you're just dumb. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing, too, is, like, what really frustrates me is, oh, it's to protect the children. Well, what are you protecting them from? Because it seems like our generation of children nowadays are far less protected than they were before. Also, you know, most people get their first weed and shit. They don't get in a cool package. They don't get it in a cool thing. They steal it from their yeah. parents. Yeah, we still have to cart everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you still have to be 21 to buy kids. it. Yeah, yeah, it's just like an alcohol store. So if you put a billboard up on a fucking thing, that's not going to make it so mm. a kid who's 10 or 12 comes into the pot shop trying to buy weed and we're like, oh, here you go, you saw a billboard. Oh, okay. I appreciate your initiative, but get out. Yeah, no shit, man. <clears throat> it's still very strict. We also don't sell to intoxicated people. I mean, you know, but we should be able to take pride and have people walking around in our merchandise, you know, and everybody else gets to wear Dr. Dre yeah. shirts and fucking yeah. pot leaf shirts and all the weed paraphernalia. But because we work there, we can't. We should be obligated by being the 502 fucking people to obligate our business so that the state makes more money out the taxes that they charge you people way too much for. Yeah, the fact that you can't sell merch out of your own shop is ridiculous. That you have to actually have a side business with a separate license, separate building all together. That is just. That's just more money. In their pocket. Yeah, yeah that's true. More that's bills true. or more uh, permits. Yeah. And a whole other building, a whole other form of rent. Yeah. So, yeah, be careful with your advertising if your shop's out there, man. There, you have to really tiptoe around the fucking guidelines and regulations of what you're allowed to do. And it's it's absurd, but, you know, I'm of the mindset, promote, 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 promote. Get away with as much as you can, when you can. And if there are consequences, deal with those consequences. But for the most part... It's about making a stance. There we go. Businesses aren't able to advertise online, send direct mail, advertise on TV or radio, use signage that's too big. The list goes on and on. The industry continues to grow with all the restrictions. Da -da -da, put some of the let's see here. Alabama, marijuana fully elite. Oh, okay. So, wow. No marketing that appeals to anyone under 21. No. So, Alaska, they're allowed to kind of move some swag. Design shall avoid using marijuana slang such as bot. Oh, wow, they can't even talk. Yeah, bot, sell, price, you can't even say anything. 
your shit will No marketing that appeals to anyone under 21. So some states, Duh. like Colorado, Connecticut, <laughs> no marketing that depicts usage beyond it. So it is state by state, dude. Yeah, of course it is. Every state has different laws and rules and regulations and fucking disclaimers that you have to post, blah, 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 the list goes on. Advertising restriction, but no restrictions on cannabis swag. But also, too, you know, like, be a good parent. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know? I mean, but yeah, I mean, beyond all of that, fuck you guys, if you're blaming that, I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's really what it comes down to. I was raised middle class. I had some trauma and shit growing up, but I had decent parents. I had, I was I knew right from wrong. The parents have way more influence than you know what I also parents. had a bunch of friends and a bunch of them and a nice mix of people who didn't have good parents and a bunch of them were 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 horrible people to begin with uh, kids and they're horrible people now and uh, happened to live in a very small town with all of these people together and I sure as fuck was out hanging out with them and girls were doing stuff that I wanted to do the girls and I'd do the stuff and dur, dur. I was I remember up until like 14 I was a very adamant straight edge I guess you'd call it back then it was just called yeah. being a pussy <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know until, until you're smoking a bowl with a hot chick you know, alone all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, no, I smoke weed. I'm cool with weed. I mean, I invented, <laughs> I invented marijuana. Can I see your boobies, please? Sorry, hashtag, I know. Again, hashtag too early. Hashtag, this is 1985. Hashtag, it's okay. 1985, I was 11. Yeah. Not that old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was more 14. Oh, okay. 14 oh, was okay. my precipice, okay. so when it all started. So And my mom immediately had me institutionalized. <laughs> well, the school, the state, my mom. But that's... She just needed a vacation. Love your mom. We need new legislator on uh, cannabis well, uh, regulations. I'm afraid they'll make it worse. Well, we need to release some laws. We need to relax some laws is what we need to do. It's fucking ridiculous. We didn't anyway. hot box the Infinity Day, so I'm not yeah. honoring the rules. But I Rant feel over. great. Well, and it's... Yeah, I mean, in order to do that, there'd have to be a whole movement to start it. And I feel like... We're also on that precipice enough where all the guys are like, look, we're here, we're legal, we're selling, we're moving product, we're making money, let's not fuck it up. But somebody will come along and shake it up. Well, once it goes legal federally, I think that it'll relax some laws and regulations. I'm both excited and terrified by that concept. I'm yeah, excited about too. the concept of actually being able to have weed cross borders. Yeah, to get exciting. To get some fucking Hawaiian weed. To get, get some, some import and, shit. Yeah. Different growers, different styles, different cannabis. Yeah, because then it'll go global. Then you can start getting some from some fucking uh, shit from. God, what was this? I was talking to this guy, and he said it's the best weed in the world somewhere in Africa. I can't remember where, but he said it's the Everybody's best weed the best in the, weed. the world. Like, hands down, Moscow's better than any legal weed you can find. You know, I'm skeptical, of course, but hey, that's what he said, so I'm going with it. He seemed like he knew what he was talking about. He was an old old fuck but oh see that's the thing though the old fuckers we were always better than ours and I was like yeah, yeah. in some cases enjoy your 12% fucking weed strains are what takes the game man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. combining those strains to make beautiful combinations is where we're at right now and once it goes legal federally when you open up the borders we can travel with it and that'll be nice oh, the cartels would there's not, still gonna be some responsibility know. but like Certain states like Idaho, they're never going to legalize well, it. And it's, Even if it goes legal federally, they're going to be like, nope, don't I'm bring like it. You said that you a certain level of responsibility. I mean, like, right? Like a big duh. That applies to everything in life. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like for sure, man. If you're. Don't drink and drive. Don't have an open container of, of beer in your car. Don't have an open bag and a joint sitting in your ashtray, man. I mean. Yeah. It's legal now, so you're basically at that point. It's not even being a cool. You're just you're just flauntly telling the cops, "Hey, fuck you, take me to jail." Yeah, exactly. You, you gotta know? be responsible, man. Like I I drive with weed, but I'll pull over on a long trip and I'll fucking jump out with my doggy and I, well, I'll jump out and I'll fucking well, I don't even have a reason to stop. Most of that was <laughs> to let her go pee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't stop me. I've actually I've started hiking again. Well, I've also had friends too that. Uh, we're responsible with their product, whether it be booze or cannabis while driving. And you know what? <laughs> we're doing this in a car. <laughs> well, we're not moving. And we're in your driveway. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. I'm not driving anywhere after this. I just thought the irony of that. Disclaimer. Somebody's going to point it out. Yeah, somebody already has. Like, oh, be safe. Oh, yeah, I saw We're that. not going anywhere. But 
the thing is, is that I had a friend who was being irresponsible while driving, and they weren't intoxicated, but they just had shit laying out everywhere, and they got rear-ended. And they got they fucked. Got oh, fuck. I mean, obviously the accident wasn't his fault, but because the cop was like, oh, you have fucking joints. It's your fault. Bam, you're done. Well, as far I mean, as the, the legal system's concerned, that's an easy done right off. Boom. Money in the bank. I'm yeah, sorry. For the state. Yeah. Fuck yeah. They'll yeah. get everything Fuck for they him, though, because they'll give you a goddamn Dewey. Yeah, they, they gave him a Dewey. Look at this Astro van. They gave him a fucking Dewey. Look at those tires, dude. Dude, that Astro van needs like a Mad Max bumper on it. And that's like the most brutal looking. I've never seen an app from Alaska. I've never seen one with, with yeah, big tires like that. Ready to go. Look, a squirrel. Anyways, absolutely, Joe. It's fucked. So stay responsible out there. Don't drive high. Don't drive drunk. Don't drive with an open package. Don't drive with a fucking burnt joint in your fucking glove compartment. You could drive with your package out if you want. But make sure like if a school Keep bus it below the window drive. line. Yeah, below yeah. the window, man. Yeah. And don't touch it. Yeah, don't touch the package. Don't you can have it hacked. You can get it aired out, but air just don't out. touch hey, it. Everybody knows there's nothing like a little bit of airing out of the old package mm -hmm. to brighten the day. Yeah, sometimes I'll open the package and give it a good smell, you know. And you the, are a flexible man. And then, uh, you know, just let it air out for the rest of the night. It's, just fucking beautiful. it's a beautiful thing. What can I say? It's a beautiful fucking thing. I actually advertised... A uh, lady was was like, you guys got moon rocks in? I was like, no, but we have all the ingredients for one. Well, I don't know how to make a moon rock. Well, I happen to have a channel you go check out where we describe it, or Joe Rogers describes exactly how to make a moon rock. Which reminds me, I need to make a new moon rock <coughs> now that I've gotten a little bit better at filming. So we'll have to do that soon. But thanks for the shout out, bro. We just hired, we just hired someone. Uh, all right. Well, I think that'll. Uh, you just hired someone. Yeah. Let me. I'm gonna talk to you about it after camera. Am I getting fired? No. Well, guys, it's been great being on the <laughs> fucking show. I guess. Uh, I just want to say, for the record, I never liked this man. I think he's pretentious, and I hate him. What can I say? When it's two dudes talking on camera, we get a quarter of the views. I'm sorry. Hey, who's who's the one that told you that this was a great idea? I just didn't know I'd be kicked to the curb, <laughs> like. You're not. One last smoke down with, with Rot. You'll always be my number two, Rot. He's my co-host, Ma. I'll shoot him. Sorry, but I watched Old Yeller for some reason <laughs> the other day, which was the worst thing I could possibly do to myself. I am fucked up in the head, Joe. No, it feels good, doesn't it? CBG mixed in with some THC, Falcona. Fuck, man, I'm relaxed. I feel good. But no, I'm, no, I feel amazing. I'm not like stone stones, which is No, nice. no. It's uh, eyes wide open stoned. Yeah. Alert, but Thanks. chill. Fooled you, motherfucker. I ain't doing math, but I feel good. All right, well, I think that'll wrap up this episode of the <laughs> podcast show. I said it right that time. That's nice. Please follow us online and on uh, <coughs> Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe also, to the YouTube. Rot. Yeah. Subscribe to his A Moment with Rot on YouTube. Rotcast yeah. 2.0. Hiking with Rot. All that good stuff. Rot's He's got about to give up all of that because of a massive string of technical difficulties that is plaguing me. All you gotta do is do a master reset. You'll be fine. No, I'm gonna master reset the fucking shit with fire. No, what I'm gonna do. <laughs> anyway. Alright, have a Rot good day. Down. I love you all. Don't smoke meth.